We open this month's episode with an eBay auction. An auction, more specifically, that sold a prototype of the unreleased Commodore 65. Designed as a revised version of the Commodore 64, this system actually ended up being scrapped due to the increasing popularity of the Commodore Amiga. As a result, there are few of these that actually exist, and the one that was up for sale here was even in working order. It ended up being sold for over €20,000, that's nearly $23,000, £15,000, or 30000 Australian dollars. Moving on, if you'd like to add a random element into collecting game cartridges, then your prayers have been answered with My Retro Game Box. It's effectively a loot crate style service, but with game carts instead of posters and various tat. NTSC and PAL packages are both available, and subscriptions start at $35 a box. To round things off, a Kickstarter has been launched for a new Toe Jam and Earl game, and selfie sticks have been introduced in a mod of Doom. What is the world coming to? I'll open this section with Nintendo systems, with the Wii U's eShop getting loads of ports, including Game Boy Advance titles Mega Man Zero 2, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, and Castlevania, Harmony of Dissonance. It also saw re-releases of the Super Nintendo's Cybernator and Pack Attack, as well as the NES's Mappy Land and Blaster Master. The 3DS, on the other hand, received just two retro releases in February, with the first being Fantasy Zone on the eShop, but it's a lovely remastered version that takes advantage of the system's 3D capabilities. So, if you've ever wanted whatever this is to have more depth, then it's your lucky day. The second is a remake of The Legend of Zelda, Majora's Mask. You can both download it on the eShop or grab a physical copy, and if you'd rather avoid meeting a terrible fate, I'd advise picking it up. Moving on to the PlayStation Network, Qbert Rebooted was made available for the PlayStation 3, PS Vita, and PlayStation 4. Then, mystifyingly, the PS2 version of Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith is now available for the PlayStation 3. Next is that the classic, but little talked about, SNK arcade fighting game Garou, Mark of the Wolves, has been released on iOS and Android devices. Then there's a HD version of Dragon's Lair 2, Time Warp for iPad, if you fancy playing a slice of barely interactive gaming on your settee. To finish up, a HD remaster of Square Enix's Super Nintendo RPG Final Fantasy Mystic Quest is in the works for PC and Android, and will be apparently released this month. First up here is the release of the multi-game system range, which are replicas of Japanese candy cab machines, although they will look to set you back around at least $900. For that price, I'll say pachink no thanks. Second and more affordably, Pixel Wizard have announced a range of replacement covers and parts for various systems, including the Amiga 3000. And last, and certainly least, if you've ever wondered how to replicate the Virtual Boy experience using a smartphone and little else, then wonder no more, thanks to the release of the Google Cardboard Kit. Instructions on how to pull this off can be found in the link in this video's description. If you do try it, make sure to have some aspirin on standby. I'll start this section with two NES games getting physical cartridge releases. The first is Mad Wizard, a Candelabra Chronicle, and will cost you $40. And the second is Shooter Fighter Hybrid Starfighter, which isn't out yet, but will be very soon. Next is another homebrew game getting a physical release, 2D platformer Alice's Mom Rescue for the Dreamcast, with a copy of the standard edition setting you back €55. Euros. The ZX Spectrum got some homebrew love last month as well, with the Tales of Grup and an all-new fan-made Castlevania game, titled Castlevania Spectral Interlude. They're both fine efforts, and free to download too. Moving on, another reprint of Mega Drive RPG Pier Solar and the Great Architects is in the works, and you can order a copy for $59. Then there's a port of the incomplete and unreleased Saturn title Sonic Extreme for Windows computers. This is one that I would probably think is only for the most dedicated of followers of the Blue Hedge Dweller. Finally, a patch was released for the North American iteration of Earthbound, with it restoring some of the censored elements of the Japanese version. Just one fan translation this month, Game Boy Color Dungeon Crawler Wizardry Empire. Hey, thanks for watching, it's much appreciated. Please do consider giving this video the thumbs up if you enjoyed it too. I'll also say a big thank you to YouTuber OddPod, who gave me permission to use his retro game box footage, and you can check out his excellent channel by using the link on the left here. 
Also, I just hit 500 subscribers, so I wanted to say thanks if you've watched any of my videos over the last two and a half years. It really does mean a great deal to me. Oh, and there's a new show I'm looking to introduce later on this month, so look forward to that. It looks like you chose the wrong party to crash.